Lizard Man. Let me preface this event by saying that I was 25 or 26 at the time, and I am a 4 foot 10, 100 pound girl. At the time of this event, I worked at a JC Penney store as a floater, just wandering around helping where I was needed. On this particular day, I was walking through the men's suit department, which is in the back corner of the store and kind of secluded. It's a low traffic area, so there isn't always an employee posted there, and as I was passing by, I noticed a customer looking around. So I went up and gave him my whole, Hi, can I help you? Routine. The guy turned around and... The first thought that flashed through my head was, this dude looks like a lizard. The guy was bald, with a high forehead and tiny, really narrow eyes that were too far apart and slightly slanted. Typing this out makes him sound like an alien. He also had a long, thin beard and a braid. He was tall and had a huge belly. He was wearing a t-shirt for some motorcycle club. So that plus the beard told me that he was just your typical good old Harley riding redneck. We have a lot of those in my town and they're mostly harmless. Anyway, I asked if he needed any help. And for a full 30 seconds, he just stared at me, blinking slowly. Finally, he mumbled something I didn't catch, and then angrily said something like, What do I have to do to get some help around here? I'm just smiling and nodding. Yes, sir. No, sir. What can I help you with, sir? He keeps staring at me with his lizard eyes, and I'm starting to get a little weirded out because he won't talk to me. Finally, he says he needs a suit, and he needs to be measured for it. I tell him I'll go get the lady who does that. I know how to do it too, but I don't want to touch this creep. He got mad and started yelling that I should know how to do my job, and that he wants me to measure him. I say okay, but I have to go get a measuring tape. So he starts yelling that no one in this place can do their job. Terrible customer service, etc. He wants me to measure him now. I go up to the register area, allegedly to get the measuring tape, but really just to tell my supervisor we've got a weirdo. When we get back to the suits, he's gone. Or so we think. Throughout the rest of the day, I keep seeing him. He seems to be following me, because every time I turn around, he's there, staring at me with his slow-blinking lizard eyes. I tell my supervisor, who keeps an eye on him, but the guy doesn't approach me again. He just watches. At the end of my shift, which is at 4 p.m., I feel okay about walking to my car alone. It's broad daylight after all, in a busy parking lot, but my supervisor insists on having someone escort me, and thank God he did. As we approached my car, the lizard guy drove by us very slowly, staring at me. I waited to make sure he was really gone before getting into my car because I didn't want him to know which one was mine, and I took a convoluted route home, but I didn't see him. Long story short, I've seen Lizard Man in the store a couple of times, but he doesn't often approach me. When he does, he's just rude and sort of babbles, never saying anything of consequence. He never buys anything and just wanders around the store occasionally picking other employees to creep on. Our manager won't kick him out of the store because he hasn't really done anything wrong. He's just a creeper. 
so creepy, staring lizard man. Please go do your creeping at Sears. How I received and rejected my first marriage proposal. Let me start this off by apologizing for any grammar mistakes. I don't have a good excuse. I just suck at my own freaking language sometimes. So I turned 16 exactly three weeks ago, but I have this weird habit of rounding up my age months before my birthday, meaning I've been saying I'm 16 for a few months now. I like to spend a lot of my time at the local library. I'm homeschooled with three siblings, so it's pretty much the only chance I have to do my work in a quiet, neat place. About the beginning of this last summer, I noticed some guy was at the library every single time I was. At first, I thought nothing of it, as there's plenty of people I've noticed coming to the library regularly. But one day, I noticed something way off. I just finished all my schoolwork for the year and was just digging around playing games on one of the library computers when I noticed the same guy sitting two computers down from me. I smiled and nodded at him, then continued my game. The internet on my computer started going off, so I switched over to the other side of the computer desk and logged onto that one. Lo and behold, creepy guy, who I'll refer to as CG from here on out, switched over to the other side as well, sitting right next to me and staring at my computer screen as if I was blind and wouldn't notice. I immediately got a bad feeling about this and texted my mom to tell her I'd be stopping by the pharmacy next door to pick up her prescriptions for her, just so I'd have an excuse to leave. Apparently, though, CG wasn't done yet and followed me outside. He stopped me right outside the library and asked me for my name and how old I was. I told him I'm, I am Hamming and 16 years old. He informs me that his name is Jonathan and he's 46. Then proceeds to tell me I'm one good looking 16 year old and walk away. This dude looks about as stereotypical meth user as you can get. Scruffy beard, gel spiked hair, dirty band t-shirt, and ripped up cargo shorts. So I just figured he was your run of the mill creep. The next day I had a writer's group meeting at the very same library. So I left my house and started walking for it. I'll spare you the tedious details, but around halfway through my walk, I noticed CG following behind me on a bike. I was creeped out, but didn't want to seem crazy, and I simply chalked it up to him walking the same way as me. To be sure, I ended up taking two right turns, both of which he followed. I was officially bugged out. So I turned onto our town's main road, which led straight to the library. He followed me the entire three-fourths of a mile there. At some point, I don't remember, I pulled out my phone and texted my girlfriend what was going on, and then called her until I got to the meeting. When I got to the meeting, I explained to the group leader what was going on and she offered to drive me home afterwards. Two hours later and we leave to see CG still waiting outside the library, glaring at us all the way to our car. A few weeks went by without a CG encounter, so he was all but forgotten by me until the day he proposed to me. I was walking home from the grocery store with some snacks and I noticed him sitting outside the laundromat I pass on my way home. 
I groaned internally and decided ignoring him was the best bet until he ran after me. I can't remember the word-for-word -word conversation, but it went something like, Hey. Hey. How old are you now? Still 16. I don't believe you. Now I have no idea why I didn't just knock him out then and there, but I didn't. And instead, I pulled out my student ID and showed it to him. What he said next, I'll probably never forget. Oh shit, well, are you emancipated? No. You should get emancipated. Why? Because then you could marry me. I promise I'll take good care of you and our kids would be so cute. I booked it out of there, and after a couple more incidents of him following me around, he sort of dropped off the map. Until back in August, he cornered me in a gas station to demand to know why I act so scared around him, and to stop doing that. I haven't heard from or seen him since, but to this day, the idea of him freaks me the fuck out. Through the window. Longtime fan of this thread, first time poster. I'm not much of a writer, so this will be short and sweet. So I live in a small town in Australia. It's quite a nice town, but there is an ice epidemic and the crime rate has risen. Fuckload of kangaroos, too. Unfortunately, I live on the edge of a bad part of town, and there are plenty of sketch people around. Across the road is an old lady who lives alone in a brick house. About a month ago, the old lady was going about her usual Friday afternoon, heading to the local bolo to push some buttons. Anyway, when she comes home, she goes into her spare room to call her daughter before heading to bed. When she enters the room, the first thing she notices is that her window has been smashed open. The hole in the window was big enough for a man to climb through. She immediately phones the cops and hides in the bathroom until they come through the house, 20 minutes later. Now the creepy part. The police searched the area and found a man hiding in the bushes of the backyard. The man turned out to be a sex offender who had been released only two days beforehand. He had served 30 years for the assault of two other women, both also elderly, and had just gotten off parole. He had stalked her and waited until she left, jumped the fence into her backyard and smashed the window, then hid in the bushes until she arrived home, planning to attack her. The man didn't put up a fight to the police, instead calmly letting them arrest him. The lady said he stared at her intently as they ducked his head under the door into the paddy wagon. Creepy guy in the bushes. Let's not meet. In the back seat. Lurker here. I don't post or comment too often, but I thought of something that happened to my mom back when she was about 19 or 20. My mom was born in the late 50s in Detroit, so keep in mind she kind of came from a safer time where it was more socially acceptable to play in the streets at night, talk to strangers, and not have to worry. Anyways, Winters in Michigan are rough. There's snow and sleet everywhere and you really couldn't go anywhere without a bundle fuck of clothes on. She was coming out of a local grocery store and this little old lady came up to her 
with her face almost completely covered. The woman explained that she needed a ride to her house. My mom was reluctant at first and questioned why she didn't have family or money for a phone call to pick her up. Odd, but she told me that she used to pick up hitchhikers a lot, so she figured this frail old lady shouldn't be out in the cold by herself. My mom started putting groceries in the trunk and said it was okay to get into the car. The woman got in the back seat. My mom just figured she was probably more comfortable in the back, so she didn't question it. She puts the car into drive and they go on their merry way. The woman explains that her house is just a few blocks away. When my mom began to wonder how much further it was going to be, the woman just said softly, just another block or two. And this is where shit hits the fan. My mom comes up to a red light at a busy inner city intersection. At this point, she gets a weird feeling, but nothing too alarming. As my mom is looking around from behind the wheel, she looks up in her rear view mirror, throws the car into park, and shoves open her door. That wasn't a little old lady in the back seat. It was clear as day a man that tried luring her into his house or God knows where. She's right in the middle of the intersection. She gets out of the car and opens the back seat door. She, in her words, told the man to get the fuck out of my car right now. He got up, looked at her, and walked away into the street. My mom never picked up anyone ever again. Looking for a room. House gets raided. Obligatory. Not me, but my girlfriend. Girlfriend's lease is up and is looking for a room to rent for the remainder of college. So being a student turns to Craigslist. She finds a great looking house in a brilliant location about 30 minutes from the university and a two minute walk from the main street of a lovely little town. Rent's kinda cheap too. The house is a three bedroom, two bathroom place and there's two guys living there. One was 24 and the other was 35 or close. I can't remember the exact age who both work together. Girlfriend goes for a visit and meets said guys. Thinks they're pretty decent, but the older one is a little odd. She decided to move in and all goes well for a couple months. She gets to know the guys better and turns out the older guy has been homeless before and had had a pretty rough start to life, but now he's firmly on his feet. She chalks up his weirdness to that. I come for a quick visit and meet these guys myself. Younger one is great, very talkative and generally a nice guy. Older one is very quiet and keeps to his room a lot. I thought he was pretty weird too. I know you're waiting for a horror story, so here it comes. About a month or so after I visit, I get a phone call from my girlfriend, who is in tears. She said that the police have raided their house with a warrant for child porn. The police had seized everyone's electronics, laptops, tablets, etc. Everyone in the house is like, what the fuck? Obviously, my girlfriend was absolutely terrified. She knew it wasn't her, and I think the police did too. She managed to get all her stuff back pretty quickly after a few trips to the station. Me and her both guessed it must have been the older guy. Turns out, it was the older guy. One day, he packed up a backpack of stuff and just left the house. 
left his keys on the table never to return. We suspect he was basically running away. He left all of his other stuff in his room. Remember I said the guys worked together? A younger guy told us a few days after the older guy had run off that the older guy went into the office and basically admitted it was him and he's been doing it for a while and that he's going to turn himself in. Naturally, he got fired on the spot. Obviously, he didn't turn himself in and has since vanished. Too long, didn't read. Girlfriend needed a room to rent. Found house with two other guys living there. One turned out to be a pedophile. The Gambler I am a blackjack dealer at a tribal casino in Oklahoma. I have been a dealer for 13 years. In that time, I have seen some scary people, but none stand out more than this guy. This guy is a scary guy. I am not easily intimidated. He is about 6 foot 2, medium build, dirty blonde hair, big scar on his cheek, and reeks of Bud Light and Winston cigarettes. He had a wife that always came in with him, and she always seemed to have fallen into something face first. He is a typical redneck asshole. Not only was he mean to his wife, he was hateful to everyone he encountered. One day I was dealing to him, and it wasn't going very well. I think I may have taken like two grand of his money. And that's when he started in on me, calling me things I wouldn't call my dog. When we encounter verbal abuse, we are allowed to have our pit boss have him removed from the tables. My pit boss is a woman, and he says, I don't let no woman tell me what to do. As security is walking him off the tables, he looks me dead in the eyes and says, You better watch your back. And, I'll get my two grand back from his ass one way or another. After the altercation, he was banned, but only for 30 days. And sure enough, after the 30 days, he is back in and on my next table. I ask my boss if I can avoid the table because of our past altercation. My boss tells me he'll keep an eye on him and I will be fine. I get to the table and he just stares me down. I start dealing and he is winning. About 20 minutes into my 30 minutes on the table, he says, Boy, am I glad you're paying me because I have a knife in my boot and I was planning on stabbing your ass. After my 30 minutes was up, I immediately notified my boss what he'd said. Security was notified. They take him to the back, and sure enough, he has an 8-inch Bowie knife in his boot. This time, he was given a lifetime ban. My Worst Nightmare One of my biggest fears is someone breaking into my house when I am at home. This fear has involved many sleepless nights, anxiety, and panic attacks. It has taken me a long time to overcome this fear. This fear started when I was 8 years old. My childhood bedroom was the first bedroom you came to when you got to the top of the stairs. The stairs also had one really creaky step. I had gone to bed like any other night. My parents had also gone to bed and everyone was asleep. This particular night I was awoken by the creaky step. I thought it was one of my parents going downstairs. 
being eight and very nosy, I got out of my bed straight away to see what they were doing. I got to my bedroom door and peered down the stairs to be greeted by two figures halfway up the stairs. Thinking it was both of my parents, I put on the landing light, which was beside my bedroom door, to see what they were doing. When the light came on, I was staring at two strangers, a man and a woman, both ill-looking, sunken faces and dirty. The woman was carrying a golf club and the man had a crowbar. As soon as the light came on and my eyes met with the woman's eyes, she let out a quiet chuckle and put her finger to her mouth and motioned for me to shh. Both of them turned around and left the house. Once it all sunk in, I ran into my parents' room to wake them. They had taken a few electronic things and some money, but my fear started because in my mind, they were coming up the stairs with weapons. They were caught and given a 12-month suspended sentence. That was almost 20 years ago. This fear has always been a part of my life, but as I got older, I had to learn to deal with it. However, as of Monday night, this fear has come flooding back. I live on my own and had decided to watch a film downstairs. I must have fallen asleep. As I woke, the film had finished and the TV had gone to standby. Too lazy to go upstairs to bed, I decided to just sleep on the settee. I had left the curtains of my living room open and couldn't be bothered to shut them. Around 3 a.m. I am woken up by shouting in my front garden and my outside light coming on. This was followed by my next door neighbor pushing a man against my living room window. My neighbor shouting, Stay inside, stay inside, call the police. I did this. About 10 minutes later the police turn up and they arrest the man that was pushed into my window. My neighbor explained that he heard two men talking outside our houses and what sounded like my garden gate opening. When he looked out of his bedroom window, he saw one man with his face pressed against my living room window, trying to get a look, and another man standing at the front door. Instead of ringing the police, my neighbor decided to confront them. He managed to get a hold of the one at the window and they ended up having a bit of a scuffle before my neighbor slammed him on the window and managed to restrain him. The man at the door ran when he saw my neighbor grab his friend. Wedged in between the plastics of my front door was a screwdriver. Not sure if he was trying to pop the lock or snap the plastics to get in. This is possible on these doors as I have lost my keys and had to get someone to do it for me but this door was new and not the old damaged one. I am forever grateful for my next door neighbor. The police told me that the man that they had arrested had only been released from prison the following week for burglary and an attempted rape. So thanks to the men for renewing my fears and any burglars out there Let's not meet again. Update. Firstly, thank you all for the comments and well wishes. Honestly, I could not thank my neighbor enough and will always be thankful that there are still people who are like this. The second guy was caught today. He is also waiting for a court date, but likely going to get off as it was his first offense. I'm getting a security system fitted next week, thinking of getting a dog. Not for the sole purpose of protection, I have always had dogs, but my last one passed away last year. Obviously none of this will be a solid way of protection, but it'll help calm my nerves. Again, thank you all for reading and your comments.
stalker picking the lock to my apartment multiple times. When I was a sophomore in college, I lived in a small but beautiful historic studio apartment in a small east coast city that had somewhat of a reputation for crime and danger. However, the neighborhood I lived in was usually considered one of the good neighborhoods. It was close to the city's university and was mostly students living there, especially on the street my building was on. My building was a huge four-story townhouse, if you can really call it that. It was really a mansion as a whole, built in 1895. The architecture was really awesome. Built-in bookshelves and huge mahogany pocket doors that slid into the walls. Anyway, the building wasn't exactly in mint condition and my landlord was pretty lazy. He would always come by and check up on things and make promises to get stuff fixed, but never really got around to doing much of anything. The apartment I was renting was on the first floor. My front door immediately on the left as you walked in the building's door to the street. This door, the building's front door, which from the street opened to a small lobby area with only one door in it. Mine and a staircase to the other apartments upstairs was huge and heavy and never locked. In fact, you couldn't lock it, and in fact, it didn't even close all the way. So basically, the door to my apartment was open to the street. I asked my landlord countless times to please do something about the front door, but he never did anything. Well. One night I was getting home from work and it was very late, about 3.45 a.m. I worked as a pizza delivery driver at a place that was open really late every night. And I was just sitting on my couch watching a little TV before I went to bed. I had also gotten totally naked, something I truly loved being able to do considering I lived alone. Anyway, not ten minutes since I'd gotten home and sat down, I hear three slow knocks at my door. I'm thinking, who the fuck would be at my door at this hour? What could they possibly want? Why didn't I hear the building's front door open like I normally do? Young and naive, I was half scared and half intrigued. I put a robe on and slowly crept towards the door, which by the way was literally right next to the couch where I was sitting. At this point in time, my door didn't have a peephole, so I just had to kind of take a leap of faith and open the door. And when I did, a tall, emaciated, middle-aged man stood staring down at me with low eyes and a grin. He was wearing all black many layers, and a big black trench coat. The first thing he said was, Can I come in? With the door barely open, I got a deep pit in my stomach and just went, Uh, no man, what's up? He just stared into my eyes for a second, clearly disappointed, and then said, I have seen you around, and started to grin again. The pit in my stomach had evolved into a churning sensation and I was starting to get nauseous. Yeah, I've been watching you, and I like the way you look, he said. So you gay? Bisexual? I was just like, I don't know, but it's late and I'm going to bed. Bye. He kind of nodded and lingered for a second, as did I, watching to make sure I saw him leave the building. And once I did, I closed the door, locked it, and stood with my hands still on the knob for a good minute at least. After I snapped out of my shock, I ran over to my couch and pushed it up against the door. 
I ended up sleeping on the couch that night, even though it was right there. It just made me feel safer, like I could hear if something happened. Well, nothing happened that night. It wasn't until about a week later, on one of my nights off from work, that I was sitting around my apartment winding down by myself after I had had some friends over drinking and smoking a little bit, as college kids will do. All of a sudden, I hear a weird rattling noise coming from across the room, so I turn off the music I was playing to find out that it was coming from none other than my front doorknob. I looked at it for a second and saw that both the knob and the top lock were jiggling. Someone was trying to get in. Like a deer in headlights, I was frozen staring at the thing's wiggle and shake until I started to see the top lock actually budge and start to turn. I leapt up from my chair and soared to the door, grabbing tightly on the lock and forcefully twisting it back to being locked. The jingling of the lock and knob stopped for a second because whoever it was clearly knew now that I knew. It was only a second though before they just started struggling again and I had to use all my might just to keep it still. Sweat was dripping down my forehead and my rib cage, and after about 15 seconds of wrestling with this intruder, it suddenly stopped, and I heard the building door open and close, and footsteps run down the stairs of the stoop to the sidewalk. Just like I was before, I was paralyzed with my hands on the door for a good while before I realized I was crying and shaking and that I needed to call someone. My instinct was to call the police. In hindsight, I regret this for the following reasons. I was having basically a panic attack while I was on the phone with 911 and actually threw up during the call. And I think that's when they decided I was just fucked up or something. When the two police got to my apartment, they stood in my doorway as I struggled to recount to them what had happened as I'm shaking and crying. I notice at one point they're both smirking and laughing, and I say, what's funny right now? And one of them goes, it reeks of marijuana. I was just like, um, okay, and basically argued with them after that. Long story short, they ended up confiscating a bunch of my shit from my apartment and basically turning the whole situation into a little mini drug bust. Although they said they weren't going to charge me with anything, just take my shit. Nothing about this attempted break-in besides, keep your doors locked. I was devastated and felt so helpless. I hate to make this story so long, so I'll try to keep this last part short. Basically, this same scenario happened one more time about two weeks from the last time. Only instead of calling the police, I called my dad, who raced down in an hour, two hour drive from his place to this place, with a crowbar up his sleeve. Unfortunately, by the time he'd gotten there, whoever it was had already left. They didn't struggle very hard this time. My dad ended up cussing out my landlord and demanding he get the door fixed and install a new lock and a peephole on my door. He did make this happen within a reasonable amount of time and I also got one of those bars you wedge between the doorknob and the floor as well as an aluminum baseball bat to protect myself with, so I felt a lot better from then on. Needless to say though, I ended my lease for that apartment a month early and never moved back to that street. I never found out for sure who was trying to pick my locks and if it was the guy who would come to my door the first time, but whoever it was, let's not meet. Too long, didn't read. Creepy guy comes to my apartment where I live alone, tells me he's been watching me. Shortly after, the lock to my apartment is attempted to be picked, unsuccessfully, 
on two separate occasions, although neither time was anybody seen or caught by me. Reading this sub helped me from becoming a victim today. Hello everyone. I want to thank every person on this subreddit for having the courage to share your experiences. Since I have begun reading here, I purchased an effective pepper spray. It is capable of spraying a person as far as 15 feet away, and it also marks the person with dye. I carry it in my purse within easy reach. Today, it worked almost like magic to keep me safe. I am a female of slight build and I'm about five foot five tall. I was leaving the hospital after visiting a dear friend who is a patient there. I was walking to my car which was parked in one of their parking lots. The hospital is located in a bad part of town I try to avoid this area because of its high crime and seedy reputation, but I love my friend and just had to visit. As I walked towards my car, a tall, huge guy was walking in front of me. He was about six foot in height and had a stocky build. At first, he seemed normal and non-threatening in any way. Then everything changed. He began to ramble loudly and began gesturing with his hands. I thought that perhaps he was high on drugs and that was making him act in this manner. I decided to leave the sidewalk we were both walking on and walk in a different direction. I just wanted to get away from this creepy guy. As soon as I did this, he turned from the direction he was walking and began to make his way towards me. As he did so, he locked eyes with me and began making animalistic sounds. His entire demeanor made the hairs stand up on the back of my neck. At this point, I had my pepper spray in hand and moved the lever on it to the ready-to-use position. He was coming toward me so fast that I had to go further out into the parking lot area. I was hoping to lead him out far enough in order to buy enough time and space between us in order to run back and jump into the safety of my car. He seemed to sense what I was doing, and I began to feel as if we were in a cat and mouse situation. This is when everything changed. I put up my hand to aim the pepper spray, and was about to yell out, I have pepper spray, and I will use it. Before I could speak, the creepy guy saw the pepper spray in my hand and immediately did an about face and walked quickly away from me. A funny thing I realized after this encounter was that when he saw the spray, he got quiet. He was no longer acting strangely animalistic or loud in any manner. He went from creepy to normal in two seconds flat. It made all the difference in the world to have that in my hand, ready to aim and spray. I never even had to utter a word to him. I quickly got into my car and locked my door. I breathed a sigh of great relief as I started my car. This guy was coming toward me in a frightening and menacing manner, but... The mere sight of pepper spray made him change his mind about accosting me. Thank you, Reddit and Redditors. If it weren't for reading your shared experiences, I wouldn't have been prepared to defend myself today. Encounter with the Mafia
So, disclaimer, this is not my story. This is my mom's. A little backstory. When she was a kid back in the early 70s, my grandfather was in the Navy, so they moved around a lot. He did a lot of HVAC work in the Navy, so after he was done with the military, he decided to open his own business. So they packed up their bags and moved to Miami. Everything was so great. His company was doing well. They had their fourth kid, and it was Miami, so everything was awesome. Then one day, my grandpa starts getting a flood of complaints. People were calling in saying they wanted their money back for his shoddy work. He immediately noticed something was wrong. He had never had any of these clients. After some questioning, he learned that all of the complaints were that two Cuban guys came in and did terrible work. Everything was rushed and something reminiscent of an amateur. One problem with these complaints. My grandpa was the only employee at his company. So he started digging and found the men posing as his company. He called and threatened them with legal action. Well, that didn't stop. So after all of this, my mom noticed something weird. There was always one car that would be at the same spot as her school. Sometimes it would be on her way home. But as a kid, she didn't think anything of it. But she noticed it was happening a lot. And it was always two Cuban guys. So she told my grandpa, and he had an uneasy feeling about it, but didn't think anything was wrong. Here's the worst part. One day, he gets a call from the number that was posing as him. After telling them off again, the man on the other side was super calm. Then he finally spoke. Tom, you're going to continue to let us use your company name. Now, if you haven't picked up some clues at this point, this was the Cuban Mafia. They were posing as my grandpa to get some cash. Now, my grandpa knew this, but didn't give a shit. He stubbornly told them to fuck off. The man sighed and said, Tom, we know who you are. We know you have a wife who walks to work at this time every day. And we also know you have a daughter named Tammy who walks to school every day at this time and gets out at this time. We've been watching her for a couple weeks. At this point, my grandpa was sufficiently terrified he hung up the phone and packed up everything. My mom says they were out of there in three days. So please, Cuban Mafia, let's not meet. Almost got kidnapped. Hello, I've been reading lots of stories from here, and I feel that I should share my very own experience with you all, as it was something that made me change into who I am today. Some info before that, I am a Brazilian guy, 20 years old today, but around 12 when this story happened. Just a normal school day. Boring subjects, knowing people, you know, the usual. I come from a good family with a somewhat good financial situation. So at the time, I had with me not only a Motorola V3 cell phone, which was like top tier back at that time. Also, uncommon for kids to have one. 
Every day after school, it would take a while for my father to pick me up with his car, which used to be a silver Mariva. It was also the same car that he used to drive me to school with. That being said, one day I was waiting for my dad to come pick me up, and I did so by playing some new Super Mario Brothers on my DS, which I of course took to school. That's when my cell phone rang and I heard the voice of a somewhat cheery man saying, Hey Pete, it's your Uncle Paul. I'm here to pick you up for your dad. Come outside. The man said, and I simply answered with, Okay, and left through the gate. The thing is, it was still early way earlier than my dad usually picks me up. When I thought about that, I went back inside and waited for another call. And it came fast. Where are you? The man asked. I replied with, yeah, I don't see you. And he sighed on the other side, giving me instructions. I'm in the same blue Corolla that I dropped you today in the morning, Pete. Come on. He said and hung up. He was getting impatient. My 12-year-old brain processed what was happening and connected the dots. The thing is, I had no uncles with a name that started with P. They were all A's. Also... Couldn't be my mom's brother because he's been dead for a long time now. Last thing was that no one calls me Pete, an American nickname, but my family, those being my brothers, sisters, and parents. I started to get nervous and talk to my friends about it. After all, some of them were still there. Basically, all they said was, Yeah, tell him to go fuck himself. Now, I'm not one that likes to cuss, so I went to the principal for help. On my way there, the man calls again, and I pick up. This time, he was angry. Why the fuck are you taking so long, you son of a bitch? Blue Corolla. Are you brain dead? Get out here with that stupid video game of yours. And then he hung up. I instantly froze. Thoughts rushed through my head, such as, They are trying to kidnap me? Is this real? And so on. I started running to the principal's office. I was getting nervous and I called my dad, who answered in a hurry. I took a deep breath, not to seem too scared. Dad, did you by any chance send someone named Paul here to pick me up? I asked, my heart pounding to hear what I wanted. And that's what I got. No, whoever is calling you, do not go outside. I'll be right there, he said and hung up. I went inside the office, bursting into tears, asking for someone to get the man that was probably out there waiting for me in a blue Corolla. I gave the teacher and the principal the number he was calling me from, and they called it, to no avail. So they decided to go outside and check the blue Corolla for themselves. I stayed in the office, and I got another call. This time I picked it up and my hands were shaking, but I knew he couldn't harm me. What's taking you so long, you little shit? He screamed. Listen, I know you are no uncle of mine. You have no idea which car I come to school in, and you are trying to kidnap me for whatever reason. I'm not going outside, I screamed. Again. He said quietly. I screamed a what? And called him sick and crazy. And he said, 
You are not coming out again. You've been out. You just know better. Fuck you. He screamed before laughing like a maniac and hanging up. I held my phone on my hands and stared at nothingness for a while until the teacher and the principal came back, saying that there was no such thing as a blue Corolla outside. Shortly after, my dad arrived and I was escorted to the taxi with him and the guards. I sat there and did nothing as my dad talked on the phone, trying to track the number that had been calling and to try to find someone by the name of Paul. I took the rest of the week off school and eventually I had nightmares about being outside school and being grabbed. After this happened, I went back to school the next week and instantly joined the kendo club in order to know something about self-defense, especially if I got the chance to be armed with something. Years later, my mom and dad divorced. Saw that coming, though. After all, when this episode happened, I was living with my older brothers because they didn't want to involve me in their fights. However, once I came back home with my mom, I found out that they divorced because my father had had around five other lovers in five different places, and one even called my mom saying, You won. I've tried everything to keep him from me, but you won. Or at least that's what my mother says. I wonder... Could all this kidnap story be part of a scheme from one of those lovers to steal my dad from us? If it was, then that just makes me uncomfortable to know that a human being is capable of probably killing a kid for whatever they want. Good thing is that today I'm 20, a teacher and a regional champion of kendo, and I have never heard of Paul ever again but I still wonder what would have happened to me if I didn't have the decency to go back inside and kept looking for him. So, Uncle Paul, sure. let's not meet. Creepy Kindergarten Counter This happened when I was in kindergarten, so I was about five or six. My mom had recently welcomed home her second baby, and he wasn't born in the best condition. This isn't important until later. Anyways, my school district had an early release day for us. However, my mom must have not seen it on the school calendar because she wasn't waiting outside for me. My old apartment building was the kind of building where you either needed a key or to be buzzed in by a tenant. Because I was six, I didn't have my own key, so I just rang the bell. However, my mom didn't buzz me in, as she didn't know I was supposed to be let out early. With no choice but to wait outside, I sat down on the steps and waited for my mother. It seemed only a few minutes had passed before a man walked up to the steps with a key in his hand. Assuming he was one of the other residents, I quickly explained my situation to him and asked if he would let me inside. The man obliged to let me in, but told me to stick with him for safety. Naturally, this made sense to me, so I agreed. I reckoned he wanted to stop at his apartment for a moment and then he would walk me to where I lived. He opened the door and stepped into the building. He grabbed my wrist and pulled me in behind him. It just dawned on me that it was a rather small apartment building and my mom knew almost all the tenants. I didn't recognize the man as one of them, but I figured he must have moved in recently. I found it weird that he grabbed my wrist, but 
When I tried to pull it away, he only held it tighter. Once we get inside, he quickly began walking down the hallway towards the back door. At this point, I knew something was wrong, but being six years old, I couldn't do anything to help my cause. For what happened next, I am forever grateful. My mom's friend, we'll call her Michelle, was on her way to the back door because that's where the parking lot was. Upon seeing the man trying to take me out the back, she screamed at him, demanding to know who he was and what he thought he was doing with me. The man quickly let go and ran out the back. Michelle took me back to her apartment and let me wait there until my mom got home. I asked Michelle about this recently, and she told me that the man hadn't been a resident in the building. So, creepy man who tried to make off with me, you can go fuck yourself. Weird guy stole stuff from my house. I was seven years old, and I was in my bedroom drawing when I saw someone enter my house from the front door, put a finger up to his lips in the shush motion, and proceeded to take things from my house. He was one of my mom's friends, so I thought she said he could have them. Well, when my mom got out of the shower, I told her that he came to grab some stuff, and she flipped out called the cops and everything. After he got out of jail, he would stalk my backyard and stare through our windows, sometimes jingling the doorknobs. The last time I saw him, we came home from the store, and I ran to my bedroom to see him crawling through my small bedroom window in the darkness. The police got a hold of him once again, and he was gone after that. Never once saw that man again. Internet Creeper Hey everyone. I was just lurking through Let's Not Meet and saw a story that reminded me of something that happened to me when I was about 12 or 13. I'm now 18, and thought I would share. So around ages 12 to 13, all of my friends were getting into makeup and clothes, etc. And were constantly buying nice designer stuff. My family were broke at that time, so I was never able to get this stuff. This led to me and my best friend Emily looking for ways to find money. Where I live, you can't get jobs at 12 or 13, so we were thinking of doing jobs for our neighbors, such as walking dogs or car washing. Emily came up with the idea of me doing modeling for money. She said you can put pictures of yourself online, and photographers will get in touch with you, and you could potentially get money. So, being stupid, we went on to loads of modeling websites, most of which probably weren't legit, and started putting my picture everywhere. We also put my phone number on there so that people could contact me. Anyway, nothing really came out of this, but the next weekend I was round back Emily's house and my phone rang. It was an unknown number, and I answered. From what I could tell at the time, it was an older man with a thick northern accent. He started off by saying he had recently seen my picture online and complimenting me, saying I was very pretty. He then went on to explain how he could have a potential job for me. So I asked him what he would want me to do. He said he would like for me to come to an office in the city and read a script. 
but the script was quite mature and he wasn't sure if I was old enough. I told him I was 13 and this is where it got weird. He started asking questions about my body. If I had had pubic hair yet, if my breasts had come in, how big they were. He was even asking if I shaved my legs yet or if I'd grown hair there yet. At the time, I was so stupid and young, I didn't realize these questions were fucked up, so I actually answered them. He also explained all about the script he had wanted me to read. This was basically him describing people having an orgy. As we continued to speak, his breathing got louder, and he sounded as if he was doing something he shouldn't be. Then he asked if I was home alone. I was, but instead I said no and that my friend's mom was home. He replied by saying, well, why is her little purple car gone then? This freaked me out and I hung up. My friend's mom did have a small purple car at the time. I have no idea how he would have known that. Maybe it was someone we knew. I'm not sure, but anyway, after that I went back online and took all of my pictures down from the modeling site. Guy tried to kidnap me in my own backyard. So this is one of my less scary experiences with creepy or possibly deranged people in my life. But not to say it still doesn't creep me out. As a kid, I liked to sit on my little mini playground, as I called it, and read. I actually look back on this and laugh, as now I'm a lot more isolated and an indoor person. My dad got home around six, so my mom took us to and from school. When my mom was parking her car, she pointed out a creepy guy in the car in front of hers, just looking at us. She ushered us inside and brushed it up to just a weird coincidence or something like that. She still kept a close eye on me from the kitchen window, but she had to do something and left the kitchen. Now, my mom was cautious because she had a creepy experience with a pedophile herself. From the top of the platform I was on, next to the slide, I heard a man say something. I don't remember what it was, but it was something along the lines of, Hey kiddo, I have some Goosebumps books in my car, if you want to read them with me. My mom and dad had drilled stranger danger into my head, and I was a really smart kid for my age, so I tried to tell the guy off myself. I know, stupid decision, but I thought I could handle it. I was wrong. The guy kept insisting that I come and read with him and I kept saying no. Eventually, the guy pretended to get a phone call and claim it was from my mom. He told me she said to get into the car and he'll take me to the bookstore. I knew that there was no reason for her to ask someone to take me somewhere, and I just ignored him. Then he got out of his car and began approaching me. And this was before we got a fence, so I was out in the open. He grabbed my arm and dragged me to his car. But just then, as if God himself gave me a miracle, a police car came down the road and saw what he was doing. The guy let me go and sped off. The officer chased him and eventually caught him. My mom came rushing out when she heard the sirens and comforted me. The guy claimed to be my dad 
and that my mom was abusing me. The officer knew my family well and called his bluff. I'm seriously glad that that officer was there just then. I can't explain it in any other way than a miracle. So, pedophile who tried to abduct me? Let's not meet again. Stalked at Taco Bell. This happened just yesterday. My friend Anna and I were on the bus after running some errands. She wasn't feeling well, so we ended up getting off the bus about 20 minutes before our stop so she could use the restroom in a Taco Bell. She hands me the bag she's carrying, and while she's doing so, a guy comes in and says, How you doing? She politely replied with a hello before going inside the restroom area. I'm waiting with the bags scrolling through my phone when I feel eyes in my direction. This guy is sitting across the restaurant staring at the bathroom door. I go in to check on Anna and talk to her outside the women's bathroom. It was a single stall. She says she's okay, so I go back out and sit at one of the tables. He's still staring. Hasn't ordered anything at all. Not even a drink. She's still in there. When he gets up and goes through the door for the restrooms, I immediately text her telling her not to come out, explaining he's been staring and waiting. Anna tells me that she didn't hear the men's door open or close at all. They are right next to each other. I immediately go up and tell one of the workers the women's bathroom is clogged, while lowering my voice and saying, A guy has been following me and my friend. She's trapped in the bathroom. The worker just says, Okay. The guy finally comes out and sits where he was before. I text Anna saying it's safe and blockade the bathroom door so he can't see her coming out. This probably would have worked if Anna wasn't taller and curvier than me. It wasn't even 30 seconds later when the guy followed us out. He's trying to talk to Anna, who just keeps saying no. I lead her to some construction workers who were working on the construction of a pizza patron. I inform one of them quickly what's going on, and he stands with us. The guy passes us and walks away. I didn't notice police by the apartments next to it. I just needed to get somebody's attention before it turned dangerous. The other construction worker went over to inform the police, who went to patrol a little. The first worker stayed with us while we waited for the bus and told us to be safe. We made it home without another incident, but we will never stop at that location again. So, stalker who refused to take no for an answer, let's not meet again. And Taco Bell worker, fuck you. You're asking for a lawsuit. If I hadn't told her not to come out and she'd opened the door, he very well could have taken advantage of the fact that there wasn't a way to unlock the door from the outside. Edit. Since some people are throwing hissy fits about me saying it warranted a lawsuit, I never said I would sue them. I simply stated that if this had gone worse than it did, Taco Bell could be held responsible as they were aware but did nothing to assist. My neighbors might have been rapists. This might be a shorter story, but it is definitely scary and still gives me bad thoughts when I think about it. 
So without any further ado, let's begin. This took place after my parents had divorced, but they lived close to each other, so it wasn't all that bad. Anyway, I would frequently forget stuff at my mom's house and would take it up to my dad's house. This was almost a nightly thing. So one night I was bringing my Xbox and some games to my dad's house. And one thing to note is that this was one of those double houses, if that makes any sense. Anyway, to get to my dad's house, I had to pass their side first. While I was passing their side, the wife, I presume, stopped me and asked me to come closer. I thought since my dad shared houses with her and her husband that he knew and trusted her, so I went closer. She noticed the Xbox and the games in my hands and straight up said, Hey, we have a bunch of fun games, and our little boy's your age, and he will play with you in here. Do you want to come in? I slowly backed away, not turning my head to her. As I was doing so, I felt a cold, large hand on my right shoulder. My blood ran cold. I didn't dare turn around. I heard from behind me say, She isn't this nice all the time. I suggest you take her up on that offer. My fight or flight kicked in, and I chose flight. His grip wasn't all that good. So I escaped easily and ran inside. I didn't tell my dad, but I did call the police. I couldn't live knowing that they have multiple kids in there. A few minutes passed and a police car showed up. Five minutes later, the two officers walked out of the house with the two people. Apparently, they had been luring kids into their house with the promise of games and toys. I still imagine what would have happened if the man's grip was stronger, and thank God I chose to call the police. They had two kids in the house, both boys. So, creepy couple who lure kids into their house. Let's never meet again. <laughs>